from Alan Combs. When California's Proposition 227 banned bilingual education in public schools two years ago, many educators expected the worst, fearing the state's one and a half million Spanish-speaking children would flounder when thrown into English-only classes. Instead, they flourished, and new standardized test results show that the student scores increase, sometimes by more than 50 percent. But critics contend it's too early to give Proposition 227 an A+. Plus. They credit other reforms, such as smaller classes, more funding uh, for the success of the students. So did Proposition 227 really make the grade, or will immigrant students suffer in the long run? Joining us, Ron Anz, the co-author of Proposition 227 and chairman of English for the Children in Washington, D.C., Angelo Amador, education policy analyst with the Mexican-American Legal Defense and Education Fund. Good to have you both with us. Uh, Mr. Amador, how do you dispute those statistics? Don't we see well, an increase actually, in the way the kids are, how well they're doing? Well, the, the test scores did go up, but what they forget to mention is that the, actually the gap between the general number of students and the link Latino students have actually increased as opposed to decreased. What do you mean by in, the gap? What do you mean by that? Well, the gap is the scores. All of the scores went up. All the scores went up also for uh, right. students that were in bilingual education programs. But the gap between the general score, the average scores, and the scores of uh, limited English proficiency students, right. the, the score is there's a, a bigger gap. And Ron, there are all these other factors, smaller classes, more money being put into these classes, influx of money into the system. Uh, th there's a shift to progressive phonics teaching in California. You can't discount those, those reasons for the increase Some in how well they're doing Some of those are very important. In particular, yeah. phonics, getting rid of whole language, I think, right. played a huge role. On the other hand, all the theorists who support bilingual education also support whole language. So they thought both of those reforms are mistaken. Right. And also there are waivers. Some of these kids get waivers so they don't have to uh, do English only. So you don't, that's got to be factored in, which it really hasn't, right? And that's the most important factor because when you look at those students who stayed in bilingual programs, they're doing much, much worse. Their test scores increased minimally compared that, to the that students. That that Ron, right. First of all, they can't admit they're wrong. Because you know what? <laughs> it, there, there were those of us that supported you. You were on this program back in 98. Sure. I remember almost being accused of being racist by supporting Prop 227 and all sorts of allegations. These kids will never learn. Actually, one, one thing that I want to mention yeah. is that they, they are, there are scores in at least 10 schools that have a significant number of bilingual students that did better uh, than schools with uh, English-only students. But English Angelo, only but that, the, study, the study is very clear here. These kids are flourishing. In spite of predictions of doom and gloom that were made on this very program just a couple of years ago, the critics the pundits, all of them were wrong, and Ron well, was right, the, because the, the results gap, are staggering. Sir, I mean, this is overwhelming, the success we, we're not of English immersion. In, we're not in against English immersion programs. Actually, as you were saying earlier on the previous segment, we're in favor of having choice. We, we think that the parents, the educators, well, who have choice of how to better educate children. This is something that, uh, that you just said yourself uh, Ron, less than 10 minutes but, ago. But the reason why I wasn't surprised is because we already had some information that, that we could go on prior to you putting 227 into full effect, the immersion uh, uh, proposal and effects, because the Labor Department had a study that showed that immigrants learn English more la rapidly under that environment when, they're less, but, when they use less of their native language around them. And, and so we already knew that it would work. It was just a matter of, you know, you taking well, actually, the heat. But, but he's Hang not on a working second, Angela. You okay. taking the heat, but what was obviously you way ahead, you're helping these kids as we knew you would. You really deserve a lot of credit for taking a lot of uh, uh, heat for things, knowing you would be right here. And it wasn't just that. I mean, look, throughout all of American history, immigrants have come to the United States, and their children have learned sure. English very easily. Furthermore, in California, the only group of immigrant children who were given the alleged benefits of bilingual education were Latino immigrant children. All the other groups were taught English, and by coincidence. All the other groups did better in school than Latino immigrants. We're going to give Mr. Amador a chance right. to respond in just a moment. We've got to that. take a quick break. Mr. Amador, you get a chance to respond when we get back. The debate continues. Please stay with us on Hannity and Combs. Welcome back to Hannity and Combs. I'm Sean Hannity. All right, Mr. Amador, uh, as I pointed out here, these students are flourishing in spite of these predictions of doom and gloom. Um, you want to still offer the kids choice, bilingual education as opposed to what is now clearly working this immersion English immersion it's, it's not it's and, not clearly working it's not clearly working uh, we sir, think, sir I can hold ahead. up students flourish under English immersion they're flourishing they are doing well, well that this, they, the, it's already in we've known that this is working <laughs> no actually actually there everybody all of the test scores increase also including those of uh, the students that were in bilingual right, but the, la programs. the labor department in their study showed that this was the best way to do things and my question to you sir is this Lang English is the language of opportunity, 
success, prosperity in America. Why don't we just take a year, these kids that need it, and it's mandated by law that they get this, this education, this immersion, why don't we get these kids up to speed, we get them into the school system, we get that little hurdle out of the way. So they never, they never have to worry about it, and they can be fully acclimated we to believe, American We language. believe that English is very important. We believe English is the language of opportunity in the United States and actually internationally as well. But another thing is that we don't want kids to fall behind. We want kids to have a well-rounded education would, in mathematics, in science, in, in year, any other right, subjects in the, in the language. At right, most we're talking well. about a year. Well, well, what's interesting is there's actually one district where the students did fall behind in this last year. Their right. test scores, it's about the only district where the test scores went down rather than up for the immigrant students. Right. And that's VISTA, which kept but its bilingual kept the bilingual programs. Program. But, but again, but again there's, there's, ten, there there's 10 schools with have a significant bilingual education program that did better in, in English, I, math, and science than in English and math. How, how long they, does they, it take, immersion? How long? About a year, less about than a year. year. Less than a, a year. Young about, he's been about a year, year in my network. Out. They might send them he, back. Right. He was making the point that test scores are up for even those students not in a bilingual education program. How do you account for that? Well, the thing is, again, there were a lot of good reforms in California, getting rid of whole language, right. shipping over to finance. And all these but, other but the reforms could be equally responsible. Well, but the interesting thing is the test scores of the immigrant students rose more rapidly than those of the other students, and the immigrant That's test scores... Actually, no, the, the immigrant, actually, excuse me. Do you dispute that, Mr. Right. Amador? Excuse me. The immigrant test scores ro most r rose most fact, rapidly in the correct. districts that got right. rid of bilingual, and they rose little, if at all, in the districts that kept Mr. bilingual. Mr. Amador, do you concur with that? The, the gap... No, definitely. Definitely not. I cannot because it's incorrect. The gap uh, increased in all grades in math and, and huh. English, in except for seventh and, and ninth grade. All of the other grades. I want to give you uh, Mr. Let's, uh, let Mr. Hans, we keep sure. hearing this issue about school choice and sure. the ability to choose. Uh, we, that's a big debate as well. Should a parent be able to choose whether he wants his kid or her kid in a bilingual? class or not? Should a parent have that choice? To some extent, yes, and that's in the initiative. What the initiative allows is, it says parents who want to place or keep their children in a bilingual program right. can apply for a waiver to do so. There are tens of thousands of children still in bilingual in California. In some cases, they've been pressured to be in it by right. the teachers and administrators, but by and large, the number of students in bilingual is down about and, 90 but percent. But those kids have done better too, haven't they? No, they haven't. They have not done better? They have not done better. Mr. Amador? <laughs> no, uh, again, the, all of the scores went up. The kids in bilingual education programs have in also gone up. They went down. The waiver in the the waivers that he's talking about again is an application for a waiver. That doesn't mean you obtain the the you're granted the, the waiver to put your kid in the program that you as a parent want to place your child and in because you believe problem. it's a better that's program. That's the problem. In Vista, which had a strong allegedly bilingual program, they granted thousands of waivers. And Vista, which is the one district that tried most to keep it bilingual, their test scores went down last year. What do you do with a child students? who's not learning, who's in an English-only program and still isn't getting it? What do you do then? Well, you keep them in the program a bit longer. And if it doesn't work, then maybe program. they can <laughs> apply for a waiver. Uh, uh, Mr. Amador? Or, or, or they drop out. Or they drop out and we lost that child. And that's not what we want. We yes. want the child to move on. Mr. We want Amador, the child to have a well-rounded education. Thank you for being with us, Mr. Thank Unt. You. I'm going to give you credit. Congratulations. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, I, uh, you were on the cutting edge on this, and I give you a lot of credit for that. Stay tuned. We have more powerful debate tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for being with us tonight. We hope you'll join us tomorrow night. Thanks for being on board. Thank you.